Hi, my name is Kevin McDonald, and I'm declaring my independence. Independence from what? Why, negative thoughts and energy, of course. Chief among them, hate, division, and fear. You see, I know that we're all one, and together we can solve any problem, save our planet and each other. Please, join me as we come together as one and choose a better way to be. So now, let's begin with my independence report. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this particular podcast. I think you're going to like it. It's a great day in the Northwest, uh, which I live in Seattle, and it's a, it's a sunny day outside, and it's very nice, and we've got lots of energy, and I've got somebody on the line with me who is extraordinary at what she does. She is uh, an energy worker. She's gone through some life experiences. She's a wonderful singer, and uh, her name is Michelle Blood. Michelle, good afternoon. How are you? I am wonderful, Kevin. I'm so happy to be here today to uplift everyone and to, to be part of the Independence Report. is wonderful. Well, i got to ask you a question, young lady. You don't sound like you're from around these parts. Where are you from? I don't sound like I'm around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the South. No, I'm from, yeah, but, I mean, really the South, Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Down under. <laughs> you know, I, I'd love to go there sometime, but uh, you see, I was watching a, uh, um, a news report that you have the 12 deadliest snakes and the largest spiders in the world, so I think I, I'll pass. No. Uh, I mean, we do, but, I mean, it's, I mean, when are you going to <laughs> – you don't see them. <laughs> it, unless you're going on a walkabout, you know, but if you're not going on a walkabout and you're one of, one of the major – Cities, you really, really don't have to be concerned. I mean, we all pretty much, I think all my family have survived so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. Let's, let's talk about you a little bit. And by the way, if you want to follow along, go to uh, uh, michelleblood.com, and that is Michelle with one L, uh, uh, blood.com, and you can uh, follow along. You can get her bio information and some of the workshops that she's got going and some of the uh, remarkable reviews she has, like Brian Tracy, I've not to drop a name, but I'll drop two or Bob Proctor and they've worked together and she's been uh, quite remarkable in what she does. And it's, and your work revolves around energy. Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's a state of mind. I mean, everything is energy. Everything is pulsating, vibrating energy. It's light. And it's, um, if you are vibrating at a lower frequency, well, then you are going to be in a different, you're going to resonate with things that aren't so happy. So it's, it's so important to do everything that we can to raise our vibration. But what we're actually doing, it's not like an up or a down. As I said, it's a speed. It's a frequency which uh, can actually be, you know, uh, scientists have been able to feel the difference when you meditate, see different parts of the brain light up. Uh, you can feel the frequency because when you are around someone who has a high consciousness, in other words, the frequency of their vibration is faster than others, you can feel it. Yep. You can really feel it. And everyone is sensitive to energy. It's like if you walk into a room and people have just been fighting, you're like, you don't know why, but it's like, oh, I just don't like the feel of this room. Or you walk into another room and there's been people laughing and happy and you're like, oh, I like the vibration here. Every single person can feel energy everyone is psychic in that way because we are energy that's that's amazing when did you discover or when did you decide that that you wanted to delve into the world of energy is this from when you were a little girl oh gosh no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i i um i was living a life of what i felt thought was my purpose forever as a rock singer in Australia. I was on television since the age of five. And the way I got into all of this was from a near fatal car accident. And if you want me to share that, it's a really unique story. Please. How, and it's so interesting how we can have something that may look on the outside as something really negative and horrible and painful in our life. And it can turn out to be the highest blessing that could possibly be. So I will share that with your wonderful independence report, Kevin. I would love so, for you to. Yeah. So I was living my life wonderfully. I was doing what I love to do, 
had finally got a rock band that I had together for like, I think at that stage we were together for eight years. I tried different bands to see which, to try to get different, you know, you try different names, different songwriting, and we had great, great, we were killing it. Great success in Australia. We had thousands of people coming to our gigs every night. We were touring all over the country and we just got a record contract and we were doing videos, rock videos, and we had some interest in record companies overseas. I mean, it was really just fantastic. But in Australia, it's a huge country. It's as big as America. However, there's only, well, back then, there was only actually 16 million people in the entire country. Oh, wow. So, of course, the cities are miles and miles in between. So when you're touring, you have to travel sometimes for hours and hours to get to the next gig. And so the truck driver, I, you know, sometimes I'd go in the truck, sometimes one of the cars that had all the equipment. He was just tired. He fell asleep at the wheel. And as the passenger, all the equipment went into me. And I was in hospital for months and months and months. And, Ooh. you know, it, it was touch and go for my life for the first month. Major operation, so many broken bones and shattered things. It was terrible. <laughs> So, well, I'm glad you're you, well. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I just, you know, it was one of those things where when you're in that sort of emotional pain and physical pain and you're told you may not walk again properly and you're, you've been this crazy rock singer on stage doing cartwheels, jumping on top of speakers, I was so depressed. I was absolutely depressed and I didn't know how I was going to live. You know, how could I live I've been doing what I'd love to do my entire life and here I was going to be this broken person and so people fans and family started bringing in positive books and positive tapes things I'd never even thought of listening to not even in my periphery because I was doing what I love to do it's usually when people are in pain that they start searching for something something to take away that pain and so the most the weirdest thing happened. The weirdest thing. Someone put on a, a cassette. This is in 1989, a long time ago. Cassettes, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you under 40, I'll explain what that is later. Go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so someone put on a cassette and I couldn't put it off to listen, you know, because I couldn't move my body. And it was Napoleon Hill's book, Thinking Grow Rich. Now, how could a book about entrepreneurial male people in the 20s and 30s, Henry Ford's and that sort of thing, how could that be my spiritual epiphany? How could that be the thing that healed me? Well, it was because Napoleon Hill said, he's talking about auto-suggestion, auto-suggestion. These people had positive thoughts. They used their intention, their willpower, blah, blah, blah. But then when it got to the part of the book where he said he healed his son through auto-suggestion, through affirmations, his little boy was born deaf and completely deaf, 100% deaf, no chance of being able to ever hear. And so he would go into his little boy's room because he had seen miraculous things happen in his life and in all the studies he'd done for all these successful entrepreneurs in America. And he said, I'm going to do all the suggestions. My son is going to hear. He's going to hear. So he would go into the room every night and say, you hear perfectly. You are strong. You are healthy. You are happy. You are positive. You know, night after night, by the time the little boy was three, he had 30% hearing, which the doctor said was impossible. And so I thought to myself, wow, uh, I don't know why, but something about it just rang that this is true. And I decided that I was going to do an affirmation to heal my body. So Napoleon Hill said, you have to say it as if it's already happened, whatever you want to have happen. So I said, okay, I'm not healed. I'm told I'll never be healed completely. So I said, I am healed. Great. That's my first lie. That's my affirmation. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and because I was depressed, I thought I better throw in something there. I love myself. I am my friend. I'm, I am healed. I know I am. I love myself. I am my friend. So I kept saying it over and over and in my mind for a couple of days. And then I said, oh, this is BS. This is not working. I don't feel any better. The doctors are saying, you know, they keep telling me about the limitations and the next operation I've got to have. And, and I just said, okay, it doesn't work. I, I, I tried it, I quote, air quotes. But then a 
couple of days later, I had this epiphany. I mean, a real epiphany. Oh, my God. They must have these affirmations with music. I'm going to get my brother to go out and find me some. My brother came back and he said, no, they've got apps. They do have affirmation tapes, but just people speaking them. So I started listening to them, but that wasn't working because you have to emotionalize it for it to go into your subconscious mind. Otherwise, your doubting mind would would just say, well, that's just not the truth. I'm not going to believe it. And it goes into short-term memory in neuroscience have proven this now. And it goes back into the universe. It doesn't, you know, become part of a new mind state for you. And so I said, oh, my God, I've got I'm a singer. I'm a songwriter. I'll just sing them. I will do it. I will make it into a song and I'll just sing a little bit of it now if that's okay. Yeah, please. So so I just started singing. I am healed. I know I am. I love myself. I am my friend. And I had a little cassette player, which I always had with me in case I got a songwriting idea so I wouldn't lose the idea because otherwise it goes into the short-term memory, especially when it's something creative and out it goes. So I just sang it over and over and over on this 90-minute tape, and then I would just have the nurses to keep rewinding it, so I would just keep listening to it. So to make a long story short, uh, I I became healed after a few months, completely healed, completely healed. I ended up writing more and more affirmation songs for other areas of my life that I wanted success in. And I went into a recording studio, and I had my friend John Beatty start doing some music with me. He was one of my bandmates. And um, and before we knew it, what happened was journalists were finding out about this healing from this singer. And uh, then uh, they started doing TV reports on me and music magazines were writing up about it. And then these promoters who promoted people like Dr. Deepak Chopra, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, all of these people... These promoters said, we want you to come to these events. And I said, I don't know who any of these people are. I said, I've never read any. I, I don't know about positive thinking and everything. I've always been pretty positive. And they said, no, what you're doing is so unusual. We, we, we think it'll bring in more people, younger people who want to come to these really positive seminars. And they said, we'll pay you $5,000 a gig. And I was like, sold. <laughs> <laughs> and they said that we want you to – create your own albums and sell them at the back of the room. We have about 3,000 people come to each city. I was like, what? (laughs) So the first one I did, this is really, really, really funny. Wayne Dyer was up on stage and I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. I like what he's talking about. Yeah, this, this might be quite enjoyable. And I'd already sung and I just got off stage and I was backstage with the other speakers and there was an Indian man sitting next to me. He said, I've got to tell you, this is wonderful what you're doing. He said, this is what we all teach. Affirmations, intention, willpower, doing it through music. And the audience loved you. And, and I was like, oh, hi, I'm Michelle, Michelle Blood. And he's like, oh, I'm Deepak Chopper. And I said, oh, okay, hi. <laughs> yeah, I knew oh, that was him. The, <laughs> you know, you're one of the speakers, are you? And he said, yeah. he started laughing. He said, you've never heard of me? And I said, well, no. <laughs> so he listened to my story because he was really interested. And he said, you have to start speaking about this so that people understand what's happening when they're singing along with the affirmations with you. Because he said, I think it's really cool. But then when I did a gig with Bob Proctor, when a promoter for him, uh, Bob said, oh, I don't want to work with a singer. I don't need to work with a singer. You know, (laughs) I've got a big audience. And they said, no, no, no. We're the promoters. She's going on. She's great. And I absolutely killed it. The audience were all up on their feet singing, I'm the maggot to money and success and all these different affirmation songs. And at the break, he came backstage and he said, I have to tell you, I did not want you to sing. And I was like, oh, well, thanks. Very nice to meet you too, Bob. (laughs) (laughs) And he said, but I love it. He said, this is what I've been teaching for years. And he said, I love it. I want you to work all over the world with me. And then it's sort of my career took a different, I broke up with my band, which they weren't too happy with. And I realized all of that experience of entertaining thousands of people my entire life was to bring positivity to the world. And that's how the new journey and energy and and my, my quest to find the light and to awaken myself, that's how it all happened. I've worked all over the world and 
So all of the things that I'd always dreamt of, being a very successful singer globally, started actually happening. I started singing in different languages, started writing songs in different languages, had hit records in Malaysia and a few other Asian countries. I mean, it was just insane. It happened so fast and it all happened because of my car accident. Isn't that something that that you you don't while you were lying there in and I'm sure in great pain, you were thinking nothing good is going to happen with this. But there was somebody on the other side that was looking out after you and saying, well, this is just a a stop in the road. And then we are going to get her on her new path because she can be so uplifting and so helpful for other people. And I'll tell you, using music Automatic. Correct me if I'm wrong, but using music kind of automatically helps raise the vibration along with the words that you're saying. Am, am I close? You're 100 percent correct because music changes your emotional state of mind, your emotions. Because you can think back to a, you know you hear a song and it maybe reminds you of your first kiss. Uh, music can also make you feel depressed if you're if you're already feeling depressed. <laughs> You know, it's got a vibration to it. Music definitely shifts the vibration. People have been, they did this uh, survey and they said if you were given a choice that you could either read or just listen to music, but you'd have to release one from your life for the rest of your life, 98% said, oh, well, well I won't read. I, I, I'm not, I can't live without music. So music does shift the energy, shifts the state of mind. I mean, if you listen to James Brown, I feel good, and I knew that I would. Wow. You know, anyone will feel good. Casey and the Sunshine Band, all that positive disco music from the 80s and, you know, every 70s even. You know, people love it, even if they've never heard it before, because music uplifts the vibration. Absolutely. And I'll, t- I'll tell you this. It's a, 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 just a quick story. I believe, I, well, I know that in my life, because I've, I've, when I was seven, you know, the Beatles hit and all of that, I, I have no idea where my love for music came from. But to this day, when I'm feeling a certain way or something happens, I can turn on the radio and a song that is near and dear and means something to me will play on the radio. Don't know how that happens, but it happens all the time. And that's because it up, it's designed to uplift us and and to help us through some of the, the difficult times, which is what you're doing with your music. I just love that. Yeah, and because you're resonating with, you're in the frequency of that song that uplifts you. And of course, our higher self is omniscient. Our true higher self, our soul is one with the eternal ocean and it knows exactly what to do and when to do it. But when our um, vibration is lower, the doubting mind comes in and we can't feel our intuition. We can't feel that guidance because that guidance is always there, so in love with us, co-creating, sharing with us, giving us opportunities. But when our diamond, our beautiful diamond, that pure consciousness, when that is blocked by the sludge of being blocked with emotional hurts and fears and doubts, the vibration goes down. And even though God, you want to call it God, love, higher self, whatever you want to call it, is always there, always there guiding us. Like Mother Mira, beautiful, enlightened uh, teacher from India, she says the divine wants us to have everything that will bring us happiness. And I absolutely agree with that because when you have It's okay to, you know, have a great life and to have wealth and be positive and to be of purpose and and of service to people because then you're you're in a higher vibration and you can do more. The more you're grateful for, the more you have to be grateful for. And so I I find it really, really fantastic for people to want to strive to improve their lives, to transform their consciousness because then you start vibrating at a faster frequency and you start resonating with higher and higher planes of consciousness, higher and higher success, and you end up getting what God's there screaming at you, you know, come on, you know, there's someone who's actually writing down, they're going to change their life and transform, and you sort of see the angels up there going, hey, Stephanie, yeah, can you tell great Gabriel and Michael there's someone down there actually 
wanting to improve their life sincerely. You're kidding, Stephanie. Oh, I'll go and get them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, 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 I have to, I have to tell you the, and talking about ne- negative energy, it's like, that's why I call this my independence report because of the, the hate, negativity, and fear, which are all things, lower bri- vibrational things that block you from becoming who you really are. And who we can be together. A hundred percent correct. It is blocking. It's blocking people from the view, the beautiful panoramic view of what their life can be. They can't see it. They can't feel it because they're in that energy. And that's why, you know, souls like you and me and other people are out there wanting to do everything we can because we want everyone to be released from their suffering. You don't have to suffer. Anything can be transformed. Your life can be transformed. So let me let me ask you. You you spend a lot of time, and this, by the way, I'm I feel I imagine your bandmates feel kind of like Pete Best, um, who was the, the, <laughs> just just right when you became famous, they got they 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 were no longer in the picture, but uh, kind of like Pete with the Beatles. But in any event, um, um, it's interesting that uh, um, you were able to do that and you did practice meditation and you work to raise your vibration but you there's a word that we have to discuss and that's kundalini energy and did that number one when you had your experience did it hurt and what exactly is it well that's a great question because a lot of people don't understand what kundalini energy is and it's a very real thing i can tell you from my own experience it's very very real and What happens is as you start raising your vibration, your frequency gets higher, you will just naturally gravitate towards deeper meaning. You want to know what your purpose is, what the meaning of life is. Questions will come up. Who am I? You know, all of these things. And so we think, particularly from the West, we think of saints as we don't think of them as enlightened or self-realized or anything else. We just think of them as, oh, Jesus was Jesus. And St. Teresa of Avere, we know the Catholic and the Christian saints and uh, St. Francis of Assisi, well, they're saints. That's not exactly enlightenment, is it? And then someone might read Autobiography of a Yogi by the wonderful Paramahansa Yogananda, and they're like, oh, he's enlightened. Okay, so that, isn't that different? They don't understand what it is. Self-realization, enlightenment, you have that after you've had a Kundalini awakening. And have a Kundalini awakening is, practically impossible on your own. I was blessed to be attracted because I was resonating and I was searching. I went all over the world searching for someone who knew God. I didn't know what that would look like or what it was, but I wanted to, this soul sickness I felt, I was still joyful and happy, but it was like there's something more, there's something more. I want someone to show me my Everest. What is my Everest? What's my really big purpose? There's got to be more to this. I started practicing meditation and going and having spiritual experiences that were just something that I could not explain, things that I started seeing you can't explain. And I even went and had an MRI once because I thought, maybe there's something wrong with my brain. (laughs) Seriously, I was concerned. I was like, maybe I'm schizo or something. I don't know what's going on. I'm feeling all this buzzing and then I'm going into these different dimensions and seeing these things seeing walls turn to liquid and, and I, but they said no there's nothing wrong with you you're perfectly fine and um, and then years after that I finally met a, an enlightened teacher that was actually an American woman and I walked into this room there was only about 80 people there at just this museum in Balboa Park in San Diego and there she was just sitting there and just teaching very casually but I could feel this vibration and my eyes started tearing up and I I thought I was seeing things. I kept blinking because I started seeing her hands were glowing. Anyway, I was like, whatever she's got, I want. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like you know, what, what, what she's eating, I'll have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. And so uh, she started taking on students. She said, in, I'll teach you meditation and I'll transmit light to you to assist you to have your awakening. And after, I was so blessed that she decided to, take me on as a a student she didn't take everybody on you had to be sincere and after three years my kundalini I started having more and more spiritual experiences and my kundalini started um, being activated 
And what that is, the kundalini is an energy at the base of the spine. And it is there with every human being. Every soul that comes to this planet has an opportunity to be awakened. Sometimes it can happen instantaneously, but it's very, very rare. So most of the time, 98% of the time, uh, maybe there's that 2% of you know people that come back that were saints and they just enlighten again very quickly, like Yogananda talked about with his enlightenment because he'd been enlightened in past lives. But anyway, not all of us are that, <laughs> are that saintly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or believe it can so, happen. Yeah, so it happened to me. Uh, it, it, it was... Uh, it, went, uh, it, it took a few months for it to be fully realized. I started having what I call these Stargate experiences going through like the tunnel, you know, and into different dimensions. And um, because I'd already had a lot of experiences on my own, and she said that that's exactly what happened. She said, I know that you're telling the truth because I can feel the vibration from you, and that is what happened to me. And she said, and it, can, it can happen to anybody if they put in the effort. You've got to. But the thing that I realized, you've got to do the work on your own, but you can't do it alone. It is so important to find a teacher that you resonate with that can transmit, sincerely transmit light. They're not just talking about it. You don't go to a piano teacher who can't play piano, right? Yeah, (laughs) that's true. So you've got to make sure that you find people, even if you're just reading their books, that have had the experience themselves. No matter what it is in life, you don't want to go to anyone who isn't really good at what they do if you want to learn from them, if you want to learn French or whatever it is that you want to learn, how to build a house. You'll go to the people that have done it over and over again and they know what they're talking about because then you're safe, you're looked after. And because the Kundalini energy is extremely powerful and people have had Kundalini awakenings where they you know, they, they find it hard to handle if they haven't got a teacher who can assist with that. But bottom line is you don't have to want a kundalini awakening i didn't i never even thought it would happen i just wanted to have uh find out what my purpose was and transform my life so now i teach people from all over the world and tons of them kevin don't want the kundalini awakening they don't care about that they were attracted through maybe oh she teaches about wealth and people seem to be having so much success look at all these testimonials all these teachers use her materials it's worth a try so I have these people from all walks of life, doctors, uh, lawyers, musicians, homemakers, piano teachers from all walks of life, from all different countries. Some of them don't even speak English because they want to transform their life. And they they have the experience of being in what I call the mystical experience membership. And once they begin to have that experience of the light transmitted to them, so many things start to shift in their consciousness. I mean, I've had people that have had these experiences, like one man, his father had, they had this great family lumber business and his father um, died and he had to take over the family lumber business and he wanted to be able, he's got his own grown sons. And he said, I didn't know, I hadn't really been that involved in it. I was doing something different. And he said, so I came to you because I could see that you had worked with people and assisted them on to become entrepreneurs. There's a lot of different things you teach. He said, but this light transmission stuff, I don't know what it is, but can you pray for me and send me light? And I said, become part of the mystical experience and I will teach you, you know, not just different things that you can do to change your mindset, but you will have to start to do some practical things to raise your consciousness and to really learn what you're doing. But first of all, we have to release the fear because he was so afraid he was going to let all the family down and lose the business. And so as I started transmitting light, he started that started removing some of the sludge around his consciousness and the fear, and it started building up his um, frequency, his vibration. And now, I mean, he's been a student of mine for 10 years now, and his business is thriving. And he meditates deeply. He's happy. Uh, they said he was going to have heart problems, but he doesn't because now he meditates. And it, it wasn't because he wanted to practice meditation. He just loves it because it's, you know, it's made him healthier. It's um, his heart is really good. His, you know, all the different things that were going wrong in his life, including his health. And a lot of the reasons people have health issues is because of fear, because they're doubting minds, because whatever you think about, like the Buddha said, we are what we think. Yep. What we 
you know, our thoughts create our world. What we thought our, you know, arises with our world. Every dip, every different person has a different experience of what the world is because they are creating their own world. So if your vibration is down and your doubting mind is in charge, you can't expect change to happen, transformation to happen. But transformation, I've seen it happen for so many people all over the world, all different cultures. I've lived in Asia. I've lived in different countries. Every single person, Kevin, wants freedom, whatever that looks like to them at the time. They want to be happy. They want to be they want to help be of service to the world. They want so much for other people not to be suffering. Most of the people I meet, I would say 99.9% of the people I meet have good hearts. They want people to be happy. But fear and doubt can bring terrible, terrible things into families and can make people broke and hemorrhage money because they don't know what they're doing. And, and it can make them block their goodness, that view, that panoramic view of what could be by them you know, doing things to actually make their energy lower, you know, turn them into drinking too much. Like a lot of people during the lockdown started drinking too much. Different things were happening. But the ones who decided to listen to great podcasts like yours on your radio shows started transforming, started reinventing themselves. And they are going to have great transformation in their life through something that originally looked like a horrific happening like my car accident, things like that can shift consciousness greatly. And I know that every single person who's alive can shift their consciousness. You know, it's interesting. By the way, we're talking with Michelle Blood. She is an energy worker. She helps people realize who they really are and get to where they would like to go. And I wanted to make a comment about about the gentleman that was uh, in the lumber business and he's worked with you for 10 years and his business is going great. I'm willing to bet, I don't know the man, but I'm willing to bet that if you go start talking and do a survey with his employees, what you'll find is that his employees love him because of how he treats them because of the higher bright vibration that he goes from. Would that make sense? Yeah. His name's Marshall Thevenot. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me talking about him <laughs> <laughs> and his family adore him. Um, his daughter and his son, they were fine, you know, with their, their spouses finding it hard to get pregnant for years. Now he's got like four grandkids. <laughs> he said miracle after miracle. He now speaks at the Rotary Club. He's one of their top positive speakers. He does uh, seminars for, you know, he's got 25 staff at his lumber business, main people. And he, he does seminars, gets them positive. He plays the affirmation music for them. He gets them, you know, <laughs> he... He helped these uh, homeless kids recently that didn't know what they were going to do, that used to be on drugs, gave them jobs. I mean, he is awesome. Wow. That's that's incredible. I have to ask you, though. I have to play devil's advocate just for a second. What what do you say to people that say, Michelle, you know, you're a nice lady and and, uh, you got a nice smile and you seem to be, you know, happy all the time, but this is a load of crap. What do you tell, tell them? No, I say to them, great, you've got to, you can't be a sheep. You've got to go and experience something for yourself. It's good. If you think something's crap, well, then it's crap to you. Whatever you think is your experience. So I just say to them, you know, if you uh, think it's crap, that's because you haven't had the experience of having true happiness yet, or it's just not in your periphery right now. And that's fine. As long as you're, you're obviously a good person and you were open enough to at least listen to me. I mean, I've been on radio shows years ago, Kevin, where um, when it was just like normal radio, the the world is waking up. There's so many more positive podcasts and stuff like that. But 20 years ago when I was interviewed, you got no idea how rude people would be to me. Like, this this is absolutely BS. What are you talking about, light? You know, it's just absolute rubbish, Michelle. And I would say, look, you know, I'm just, Saying, I'm just sharing my experience, and I think people should think for themselves. I don't think you, you should follow anyone blindly. You just try it yourself and see if you have an experience that is good. And if you don't like the experience, well, then just don't do it. It doesn't matter what it is. You might prefer to drive 
afford. Someone else might prefer to drive an electric car. Whatever it is, it's your preference. You don't go and judge the person. Oh, you terrible person driving a Ford. (laughs) You (laughs) You just let them, without judgment, go and do their own thing. I would like I would like to share with folks because one of the things and people who regularly listen to this podcast know that that even though I've been doing radio for oh, about 20 years now in one form or another that in the interim I also was a city bus driver. So I would drive those 60 foot articulated buses around with that are full of people and there no a lot of people are unhappy and I discovered in the course of my 11 years that that I could make a palatable difference in the energy of the bus by how I presented my energy. If it was positive, if it was above, if it, if, if it was positive and, and happy and, and treating everybody nicely, the bus had a completely different attitude. Do you find that in your audiences when you step on stage with them? Yeah, but before I, absolutely, of course, one person, who is vibrating and a more positive vibration than everybody else can uplift thousands of people, let alone a bus. I mean, you don't have to be enlightened to be able to do that, that's for sure. But when I do an event, even if I haven't seen the room before, I I just visualize lots and lots of people smiling and happy and walking out with their life transformed. I visualize it before I get there. And I also make sure that I get there early and I clean energetically with pure water every chair in the room. I make sure that there's no energy blocks in the room so that people can walk into it. I don't, whatever I've got to do, candles, incense, just spreading light. Because when I used to do a lot of gigs for the learning annex and a a couple of learning schools in Seattle, I used to come up all the time and they would sometimes give you a room that was just nasty, you know. So I'd always get there early to do my best to make it happy. I'd put up posters, I'd bring flowers, you know, have the music going for a while before they walked in so that, you know, that people would be uplifted because, you know, maybe someone had already been in that room that had a really yucky seminar experience and they didn't enjoy it. And there's different energies from different people, different people's consciousness. But what I've got to say is, For anyone out there who is a speaker and you do teach, I don't care if it's school kids or whatever, one of the things that I I found many, many years ago is a lot of people, it's like you will speak to people that have a job that is to telling marketing, say for example, and they'll be doing great all day, but if one person is rude to them, that will change their vibration. Why? That's that's what they're going to focus on is the negative because it doesn't resonate with us. We don't like to feel negative. We don't like people being nasty to us. So it builds up this emotional block around that beautiful diamond. And a lot of times this is how it happens. So to uplift yourself beyond if someone's nasty to you so you don't get reactionary. I was in Seattle. I was in Seattle <laughs> 21 years ago. And there was a, it was a room of about 200 people. from I don't know if it was Learning Annex or the Seattle, whatever it was at the time, <laughs> school. Education for adults, that are, but not that sort of education, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. You know, positive thinking, you know, whatever they wanted to come and learn something new. And there was a woman at the back who was quite big, and she seemed to be scowling the entire time. And I kept thinking to myself, why doesn't she walk out? She's obviously not enjoying this. She was scowling and scowling and writing down this stuff. And, and, and I, this was such a huge lesson. And I was doing everything I could to lift up the vibration of the room and to get her involved. And when I have people do one-on-one sessions together during one of my events, I put her with someone I thought would be really great for her. She kept scowling and scowling. And at the end of the night, she came up to me. She bought every product I had and she said, this has changed my life. And I said, you didn't look like you were happy at all. This is before I could read energy like I can now. Anyway. But it really gave me a good lesson. She said, oh, no, it was, it was seriously life-changing. I, I, I'm sorry if I looked like I was being serious, but it was like every word you said, I could feel it hit me in the heart. 
And I was like, oh, my God, I realize I can transform. I can change. This is what I needed. She said, so I was writing down everything you said. So if you ever feel that someone is uh, being negative or they're frowning at you, don't assume you know what they're feeling or they're thinking. It could be the opposite of what you feel. And a lot of people let themselves get into a bad vibration because they worry about what other people are thinking about them. So that's another. That's something that people can do immediately. The minute you think someone's judging you, just shift your mindset. Shift it immediately. Put on some James Brown or <laughs> some I Love Lucy. Get away from yourself. Stop thinking about what other people are thinking of you because they're not thinking of you. Most people are just thinking about their own life. And so it's a really important lesson is to not complain about other people. Do your best to not judge other people because you haven't walked in their shoes. You don't know what's going on in their life. And to find out what you don't want so you can start focusing on what you do want and know that you can transform. That is wonderful advice, and I encourage everybody that is listening to this podcast. A couple things, first of all. Michelle has been so gracious, and she has uh, uh, put up a uh, page, which is uh, www.michelleblood, with one L, uh, dot com, backslash my independence report, and there is a whole bunch of stuff there that you can get, dare I say it, at a deep, deep discount and or free, and if you go there, um, and it's going to be up for a little while, how long does it, How long are you going to keep that up there for me? Um, I'm not sure. I, I guess it's up to you because it's for, you, for your listeners. And so. uh, abs- absolutely. And also, I want you to stay tuned to the end of this podcast because after we finish, Michelle's also given me three wonderful af- affirmation songs that we're going to play back to back to back so that you can get an idea of what it's like to live in her shoes and also and to raise your own vibration because what i'm discovering michelle is that most of the population that is living now wants something more they want something better and they just don't know how to access it and you are providing a huge huge service by helping people access what they already have inside them. Exactly, Kevin. It's like, oh my goodness, like this special that we've done for you, it is, I decided so many different things that I found over many, many years, over 30 years, I decided to put it all in a six video course called Advanced Transformation. And it's very, very simple. Anyone can do it. The people that have gone through this particular six-video, six-week course have had their lives changed 360 degrees, even if they've only done three of the things to shift their life. And I teach them how to uh, not just change their career, but if they love their career, how to make it better, how to make it happier, how to advance in their business and their success and their wealth, how to release the fears how to even change the energy in a room very, very easily, how to shift the energy in their home, how to release the clutter, the stuff, step by step with any area of your life because people don't understand how your environment affects consciousness. It affects your success. Even someone having too much stuff in their boot or what you call, uh, what do you call your boot? The trunk of a car. Oh, yeah. Oh, you call that a boot in Australia? Oh, and just, a uh, boot, yes. I, I don't know why. Learn that a new. trunk makes much, makes much more sense. <laughs> 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 anyway, so this six-week course, video course, I just decided to put everything in step-by-step, very, very simple uh, vibration And step by step, so each week you just watch a video and you just do the things that I'm talking about. And the people that have done it, as I said, even if you only do three of the things out of the hundreds of things that you can do, so you go, okay, I can do that. I'll do that. That's simple. So if you do something every day to improve your environment, your mindset, and your life, and also you definitely get light transmissions while you're watching it. It's just what happens energetically. That just means you end up being lifted up into a different vibration, having a light transmission. That's all that means. It's nothing complicated or too woo-woo. Anyone can understand. If you walk into a room that's filled with higher energy, you feel it. It shifts your mind state. You feel better, music, whatever it is. And 
The Magic of Affirmation Power audiobook is a new product that I've just re-released with all hours of affirmation music and lots of free things. And also, the thing that has been shifting people from 20... We've got members in 26 different countries now. It's called The Mystical Experience. And as I said, we have people from all walks of life and all different countries that have just been attracted to it for whatever reason their soul is attracted to it, but they've had great transformation and that you get two months to absolutely experience what a light transmission is, to be able to download and listen to videos from years and years and years and webinars. I mean, literally talking about masterminding, how you do it, how you get a mastermind group, how to write a book, how to start a business, websites. It's not just the mystical. I cover every area that anyone questions or asks about. And if I don't know the answer, I'll research or I'll find someone who can come on as a guest to talk about it so that the mystical experience people have resources for everything that they can imagine. They get two months of that for free. And all of that is valued at just under $500 and every one of your guests can have that for just $97, the entire lot. And if they go through that, and if they find even just one thing or one song or something that's going to shift their consciousness, then they will have the energy and the willpower to go to the next step. Whereas before, their vibration, they get all hyped, hyped up through the day and they've listened to something that's changed their lives and then a week later they're back at that same vibration. This way, the vibration will never go back to the doubting mind. It will at least be a little faster. And if your vibration is even just a little faster than it was yesterday, things will shift rapidly in a very positive way and you'll begin to feel again. No more numbing your feeling. You will feel love. You will. You want to feel life pulsing through you. You want to feel the vibration of life because it is a gift and it is your gift and we don't want anyone, Kevin and I don't want any one of you to waste your life. Not for one more moment. <laughs> so there. <laughs> that's, my, that's my nagging. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't have said that better myself because, you know, one of the, one of the really cool things that, and one of the reasons why I do this podcast and the radio show and other things is that I get – you just by talking to me are raising my vibration all by yourself and it's it's it happens when i talk to really extraordinary people which i put you in that category as being an extraordinary person now i did want to ask you because you mentioned that you can now in the course of your of your learning and continuing to grow that you can now read energy what's that about seeing. This is how I look at it. People are blocked from being able to see or feel, you know, because of the fact that we were talking about, it's a really great question, because we're talking about the diamond. We've got all this emotional blockage right around that pure consciousness, which is pure intuition. Once that's all cleared, you know where to go. You know when to turn. You know where to not turn. And it's like, it's the heart. You can see if someone is angry, you can see by just feeling immediately, you can call it seeing or reading vibration or reading energy because you can see who the person really is. You can see that they're just, they're really good people, but they're just down that day. You can, you can see who people really are. You can see that light in them and you can, you can lift them up by just visualizing them laughing instead of being sad. You can see who people are without judging, without thinking that they're thinking about you. It's just something, as your vibration, as your energy quickens at the speed, you can read people. You can read them and you read them without judgment. You just know, okay, this is a person I am not going to do business with. I'm not judging that they're bad or they're good. They're just not in my vibration. It's not the right thing to do. And sometimes you're not even told. Your higher self doesn't say they're bad or they're good. It's just not the right person. doesn't make them a bad or a good person. Oh, this is the person I'm supposed to work with. I'll give you an example. Trevor Rogers, this wonderful young guy, I don't know how many years ago he, he started working for me, what, 14 years ago maybe? Anyway, 
he was working at Blockbuster Video. That's how long ago it was. That so must have been about <laughs> years ago. That was a while, a while ago. <laughs> yeah. And I would see this kid, this lovely kid, and he, even, you know, if there were lots of people that were really busy, and I was going in there a lot because I was researching. I wrote this book about Hollywood success, and I was interviewing very, very famous directors and actors and screenwriters for this book about people, how they can become successful in Hollywood and be happy, be good at it, you know, because I'd been in the entertainment industry for years and I'd met so many people. I met this agent who I found very positive and I decided to write how to become a magnet to Hollywood success and it was a lot of fun to do it. I just decided to do it for fun. And so he would help me all the time, finding the movies or ordering them in because I said, I'm going to do an interview with so-and-so can you show me the movies that they've been in or that they directed? And he was always helpful. He was always calm. He would do whatever, even if there was some, you know, um, he was just the assistant manager of this particular blockbuster. But one day I just saw this light. I read the energy and I could see, oh, my God, he is not happy doing this and I really need someone to work with me at my office to be my office manager because I kept attracting all these people who wanted to do what I did. I didn't want that. I wanted someone who would do what I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you there. You know, and so uh, I, I said to him, check out my website. I just gave him this little note and I said, let me know if you'd be interested in talking about working with me. And so the next day he called me and said, yes, free me, get me out of Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him a two-week trial. And uh, John, my business partner, who is brilliant at IT and websites and all that sort of stuff, he uh, and very high in consciousness himself, he taught this young kid to, um, you know, early 20s, to how to do the websites. He, he, he was so quick to learn. He knew how to do Excel. He just, he'd left school when he was quite young, so he didn't have a college degree. And um, but he's this brilliant, lovely, lovely person who I rely on totally now. He's just absolutely fantastic. But I could read his energy. I knew. I just had this vibration that he was the person who I was supposed to work with. And this is a little something that you can all do. If you want to attract the right sort of person into your life, whether it's romance or work, you don't choose the person. First of all, because you don't want to involve yourself in changing someone's vibration. If you're in a faster vibration and you put the hex on someone, you know, oh, I'm going to have that as my lover. Don't ever do that. That's wrong. You want to make sure you can see first. But I wrote down, I have this, I didn't put male or female, I have this person now working with me. He is, he or she is happy, loyal. They learn quickly. They don't want to do what I do. They're happy to do this as their actual career. Uh, I see them happy. I see them loving the customers, being kind to them and being really involved. And everybody who is part of the mystical experience. The members, they adore Trevor. He's wonderful to everybody. And we just, that's how we, I attracted him. So I wrote that down a week before I first met him. Wow. That's that's amazing. By the way, I just I do have to give you a compliment for him because I've worked with lots of folks who work with lots of folks and stuff. And he's beyond professional. That, that does a great job. He was right on top of it. He was spot on. I I really really appreciate that. You have no idea. Oh, I do have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. I always appreciate him too. <laughs> well, you know, I tell him, tell him every day. It, 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 is, it is just remarkable to talk to you. And I knew that this was going to be one of those interviews that I was just going to cherish and was going to love forever because you are by nature a very positive person. But more than that, you have done the work. You've gone through some of the walls that we all put up around ourselves to get to a better place. And now you're sharing that with people in a really broad, wonderful way. And I really appreciate you. Thank you, Kevin. You too. But, you know, everyone out there listening, you know, you can have your life transformed. It's not a rare person here or there. I mean, I was looking in Asia because I thought if I'm going to find someone who knows God or light, they must be bald and a man, <laughs> yep. have long white hair and a long white beard. I didn't meet anyone that I particularly – I'm sure I did meet a couple of teachers that were the real deal. 
but I didn't speak their language. I didn't know them. (laughs) And I never expected to meet a woman that was younger than me who was American who was awakened. So, I mean, it is possible. If it's possible for a little Aussie singer to have happened what I've had happen, and I left school when I was 15, I'm just going to be honest and tell you, because I knew I wanted to sing, and I thought, what was the point of continuing to go to school when I knew what my career was going to be? And so much to, you know, my father and mother's chagrin, you know. (laughs) But um, if 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 someone like myself with not that as much education, you can become self educated, you can reinvent yourself, you can transform your life. I have always been a lover of books and life experience and reading books and just allowing yourself to take a risk and jump over that terror barrier into the creative realm of life. Anything is possible. By the way, we're, we've been talking with Michelle Blood. I tell you, she is the real deal. She's very dynamic, and she's wonderful. But you said that you could read energy. Can you, uh, you know, like, I don't know, uh, like, read mine? Am I, am I on the right path here? Or are we oh, doing okay? Kevin, you, you're, 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 you're just being a duffer. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're wonderful. <laughs> But if you want me to tell you, because I'll always speak the truth, you ask anyone. Yes, you're wonderful. Your energy is wonderful. You have a heart of gold that wants to uplift everybody. You are like an angel walking around, and I'm, I'm already in love with you, so there. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. She whiz. She whiz. She whiz. She whiz. You know, when you go fishing for compliments, sometimes you get one. That was awfully nice of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You don't have to fish far. <laughs> <laughs> but by the by the way, again, uh, we we've been talking with Michelle Blood. Now, keep in mind, if you're listening to this between now and a week from Sunday, Michelle is going to be on with me on KKNW 1150 AM, and we'll probably even be able to take some calls and and uh, to help people and to show you kind of what she does to to help people get through some of the guck that that we are all going through right now. And and I and I'm really hopeful that that you'll take this podcast, share it with your friends, share it with other people, because I tell you, you can have happiness even. In the days of uh, COVID-19 and, and all of that, you can have happiness. You can have love. You can be successful. You can do all those things. All you got to do is ask. And, and uh, um, Michelle, I, 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 we're going to go ahead and wrap this up because I want to honor your time. But is there anything that you would like to tell our audience in, in closing? Well, I'd like them to know that they're not alone. You have all of the power within you, you whether you're a spiritual person or you don't think, I'm sure you must be to be attracted to listen to Kevin McDonald anyway, but you, you're you not alone and you can have transformation in your life. Just make a decision today that you are going to do something to love yourself, to be kind to yourself, to know that you can, don't judge yourself or say you're not worthy or you can't do it, don't ever Ever say you can't. Get that word. Don't say you're going to try. You can't do it. You can. I know you can. And you are loved. And listen to these positive affirmation songs over and over again that Kevin's going to play. And just know that that all is possible for you. And never give up. Never give up, never surrender. I saw <laughs> that's from uh, um, uh, Galaxy Quest. That that was a movie that, and it was like, never give up, oh, never surrender. My God, yes, and watch Galaxy Quest. It is so good, so positive, and so funny. <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> uh, me too. Me too. In, in, indeed, indeed. Again, we've been talking with Michelle Blood. If Michelle, if you'd stay on with me, and then I want to talk to you just briefly before uh, when we get off the air, but. Uh, um, I have, I have thoroughly, thoroughly jo- enjoyed this hour, and I applaud the work that you're doing. I, I applaud what Trevor's doing for you. Uh, it's just, it's just remarkable, and and I really um, wish you the absolute best in in helping to help me and others transform the planet into something great. Thank you, Kevin, and. 
big, big virtual hug and big virtual mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, you've been listening to My Independence Report. Go to myindependenceReport.com and uh, you can go to the uh, podcast. You can listen to this again, share it with your friends. Uh, this is this is good stuff. I got to tell you, and it can be life affirming and life changing. So I hope that you'll I hope that you'll do that. And I want to thank everybody for being with us today. And uh, you have a great day, everybody. Hey, and thanks for listening to this episode all the way to the end. Hey, pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to follow us so you can receive regular updates and new posts. And remember, take care of each other because each other's all we've got. See you next time on My Independence Report.